right, this is gonna be a quick little WinMax demo just to show what the control is capable of doing, how easy it is to program features and things that show up on a lot of prints that we see in the shop. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new program. I'm gonna to go to Program Manager, New, Conversational. It's gonna give me a new, no name, whatever the next available number is. And the part I'm gonna program is gonna be a six inch by six inch square, one inch thick. I'm gonna put a three inch circle pocket in the middle uh, quarter inch deep by quarter inch wide frame all the way around the outside and we're going to drill a 12 hole bolt circle around the outside of the circle pocket. So the first thing I want to do is set up a few tools. I'm going to go in and set up tool 10 as an end mill. It's going to be a three quarter inch end mill. We can set up either direct RPM and inches per minute feed rate or surface feet, chip load, and number of flutes. I'm going to do a thousand surface feet five thousandths feed per flute and two flutes. Then I'm going to go in and do tool 11. It's going to be a drill. It's a 5 16 drill. Anywhere I can do a number, I can do it as a numeric or as a math function. So I can do 5 divided by 16. Gives me the 0 0.312. Again, I'm going to set up a surface speed of 500, five thousandths per flute feed and two flutes. Now I'm ready to start programming. The first thing we said we're going to do is mill a circle in the middle of this part. Our front left corner currently is our zero point. So we're going to mill a circle. In the center of the six inch square block will be three inches in both X and Y, positive. 1.5 inch radius. We're going to wrap it to point one above the part. It's on our R plane so we don't run into the part. Our final depth will be negative 0.5. We're going to select our tool from list. Tool 10 is the one we chose. And you notice when it came in, we have a mill feed and a mill speed RPM already set. We're going to make this a pocket boundary. It's going to spiral outward from the center, stepping over 50% of the tool diameter each time. We're going to do a peck of 1 8 and a plunge feed of 20 inches a minute. Now when I go to draw this, you see that we do have a part, square part with a circle in the middle of it. However, if I zoom out, you notice that the zero point is in the front left corner of what would be the part, but we never did tell it any stock size. So I'm going to go ahead and set up some stock geometry so this uh, graphics will look realistic. So I'm going to go to my part setup, more stock geometry. We can select or create either stock from a box, a cylinder, or an STL file. We're going to do a box. Yes, I want to manually size it. It's asking for the length 6 inch, 6 inch by 1 inch. It assumes the front left corner is 0. If I wanted to move that anywhere, I, anywhere else, I would use the X, Y, and Z reference positions to do so. We're going to leave it in the front left corner. I'm going to go back and draw again, and you see now that the corner of the part is the front left corner. That's the little uh, XYZ uh, gnomon there that shows where zero is, and now it matches what we've programmed. We'll go back to the part programming. We're going to go to next block. I'm going to mill a frame. It wants to know one of the four corners of the frame, whichever one is easiest, most easy to determine from the print. I'm going to do the front left corner, so I'm going to go in a quarter in both X and Y. We said we're going to go a quarter inch all the way around and a quarter inch deep. So I could put in 5.5 for my X and Y length, or I could do 6 minus 0.25 minus 0.25. Again, anywhere we can do a number, we can do it as a numerical or a math function. We're going to wrap it to 0.1, down 0.25. I'm going to break each one of these corners by 5 sixteenths, but we can independently control each corner. You'll notice they're numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4. I can select either a line with a length and an angle or an, or an arc or radius for each individual one. In this case, we're going to do all four the same. We're going to do tool number 10 again. I know the number, so I can type it in. We're going to do outside. Yes, I want it to automatically blend on and off. I don't need to peck it, and we'll do a plunge feed of 20. 
Now when I draw it this time, we get our frame. And I can slow down or speed up the graphics by just selecting this number here and it'll, it'll run through much faster. We're going to go back to the program. I'm going to go to next block. This time we're going to drill our holes. Holes. I'm going to do a drilling operation using a drill. I'm going to start at point one. Let's go down at 1.1 so we break through using tool 11 that we set up. That's our 516 drill. Notice again that our RPM feed rate came in with the tool. Next hole operation is going to be where are we going to do this? Locations, rotary locations, or a bolt circle. We want 12 holes in that bolt circle. The center will be the same as the circle, center of the part. It's a two inch radius. Go ahead and draw that. And now we get the part that we described. In our graphics, we can use our finger and rotate this around on the screen. You can look at it in opaque, transparent, whatever you need to do. We can also look at it in all of the different views, the front, right side, top, and isometric, or we can select them individually. So you can see that very quickly we're able to create a part that uses a lot of the features we would see on most of the prints we see in our shop, and that was done very quick and easy.